this is where it all began, where land was reclaimed and ecotourism in Namibia was redefined. Perched on a ridge with seemingly endless views across the plains, Ongava Lodge offers a relaxing retreat in the African bush. From the outset, Ongava's mantra has remained nature first. Our ambition is to rehabilitate and restore nature and the associated ecological processes that provide the critical ecosystem services that permit life on Earth. For 20 years, we have contributed hundreds of complimentary stays at Ongava to international charities who use the safaris to fundraise for their causes at charity gala events. These auctions raise millions of dollars for deserving humanitarian causes. More recently, we've entered a collaboration with the famous wildlife art charity, the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation. Beautiful artworks and pieces that adorn our exclusive lodges is testament to the powerful emotion that well-construed art invokes. Perhaps no finer example, living or dead, is the extraordinarily accomplished wildlife artist David Shepherd. He dedicated his career to fundraising for the protection of endangered species. To date, the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation has donated more than 10 million pounds to wildlife protection in Africa and Asia. Wildlife art is a superb medium for Ongava to emotionally connect with our guest and nature lovers worldwide. We're in the main area at Ongava Lodge in front of these beautiful oil paintings by the artist Susan Mitchinson. We have an extensive array of artwork collections at each camp, but they're selected uniquely for the different camps to fit in with the mood and the aesthetics of each area. Um, this particular, for example, this triptych uh, has special pride of place at the lodge because it's actually specifically commissioned for here. Um, and it is of Allo littoralis, which is an indigenous plant in Namibia. Um, and actually the subject matter can be seen on the entrance to Ongava Lodge, um, currently in full bloom. Right. Uh, welcome guys, uh, another afternoon drive. We just started off from the camp uh, two minutes ago. All of a sudden we came up with one of our special animals that we have here in Ongava, which are the water bug. So uh, in terms of uh, Ongava and Etosha, this is the only animal that you can get here in Ongava, but not in Etosha. This is the, the water bug. These guys were introduced here in 1993. A few of them were introduced just to see if they can adapt to the conditions here as they are originally from the northern part of the country where it's more wet and more green throughout the year. As you can see, even with the drought that we uh, were having or that we experienced last year, these guys actually survived and as you can see they are actually in a good condition. The, the males are the ones with the horns, the females uh, are the ones lacking the horns. Probably you guys heard about uh, people telling you that uh, water bug have a funny smell. That is true. And uh, you will read some books telling you guys about uh, lions or predators not uh, wanting them. But uh, water bug is probably one of the favorite meals of, of lions. So what you guys see there is uh, on the butt. On the butt there, you can see a circle there. All, all animals that are social or animals that stay in herds or groups have what we call follow me signs. Follow me signs are signs that you get to see at the butt or when the animal is uh, walking, signs that you can see visible. I guess uh, the afternoon is a bit short, so I'll probably leave these guys to uh, browse around and so on. I'm uh, very hungry to to go up ahead, ahead and see what Nisha can provide. Wow well, guys, uh, after traveling for a long distance towards the west, we finally got these uh, beautiful creatures that you can see here, the white rhinos, out in the clearing uh, where the food is, because these guys are grazers. They like to stay in the open like that. Okay, so this is uh, white rhinos, and uh, just from uh, a distance, I just want to uh, tell you guys the difference between the white rhino and the black rhino. This is now from a distance. If you get to see a, a white rhino from a distance, if you get to see the, the horizon of the backbone, you will see uh, these three humps. Uh, the hump the, with, the, with the back legs, the horizon, you will see there's a hump, there's a middle hump, there's a shoulder hump. 
with the black rhinos, there is only two humps. Then you concentrate on the size. This is now from the distance. Size of the white rhino, these are all just young ones. And uh, if you get to see a fully grown white rhino, the white rhino is much more bigger in size. These guys can go up to even close to uh, 2,500 kilograms, while uh, black rhinos can only go almost half, which is like 1,200 kilograms. Oh, white rhinos are also known to be to go as far as even close to 3,000 kilograms. Right, so in terms of behavior, from a distance, uh, if you get to see a white rhino moving from a distance, uh, the babies are known to be always in front of the mom, while uh, the black rhinos' uh, calves are known to be uh, at the back of the mom. The reasons why, from my experience or from my observation, is probably because uh, this is uh, the white rhino's habit. And white rhinos uh, like to stay in open areas. So this is where they feed. So while the mom is feeding, some calves don't depend on, on grazing. They only depend on milk. So while the mom is concentrating on, on feeding, because the eyesight is very, very weak, at least she, the, the, the baby will, in, will be within her radius. So while she is feeding, at least the baby will be close to her and she will be always on her side. While the black rhino always stay in the thickets because these guys, compared to white rhinos, are browsers. They feed mostly on leaves and branches, meaning these guys stay mostly in the thickets. So, and, and therefore they are very, very, in terms of behavior also, these guys are very, very skittish, very aggressive most of the time. So if they hear something or if they get bothered, they start running. Meaning if the mom is running all through those thickets, at least she gives a safe way for the baby to, to follow her. Guys are probably just uh, relaxing here. And uh, believe me or not, these guys from this distance, the eyesight is very, very weak. But the hearing and uh, the smelling is very, very good. So it's possible that they cannot even see us from here. But I'm sure with uh, this loud voice, I'm sure she, they, can, they, can, they can hear me. But even though they can hear me, I'm sure they are not bothered because in terms of behavior, when rhinos, especially, let me see, uh, the white rhinos, if they get um, uncomfortable, there are some signs that they will show us. As a guide, uh, you would know that uh, if, if they get bothered right now, you'll see the tail will be curled up in a circular way. The ears will be uh, pointed backwards, the head up. That's signs that you can pick up that they are feeling uncomfortable. But right now you can see these guys' heads are, are down, the ears are independently moving, and, uh, but the head is down, tail is down, so these guys are very, very calm. So with black rhino signs, one of the difference is that uh, when the wet rhino is uncomfortable, the tail is in a circular shape, black rhino would be straight up. So that's the difference in, in behavior also. So there is actually no difference in color between the black rhino and the white rhino. These guys, uh, in terms of color, they look exactly the same. Right, so if we, if we get up close, if you look very well at the, at the white rhino, the difference between the black rhino and the white rhino up close is that the white rhino is having a square lip, whereby the, the, the black rhino is having a hooked lip. The other difference is that uh, if you look at the, <coughs> at the ears, the ears of, uh, of the white rhino is actually pointed at the tip, whereby the black rhino is more like a semicircle, round, round shape. So most of the time if you get to see especially young rhinos socializing like that. Uh, white rhinos are actually more social compared to, to, to black rhinos. So if you get to see a crush of rhinos socializing like this, it's probably because they are not sexually matured yet. So what happens is that, for example, if there is a, a mother with a calf, uh, the, when the calf gets up to, let me say, a year old, she will stop suckling from the mom, and then that gives her a chance for the mom to re-enter estrus. She will mate 
When she made, she will made while the calf is still around. She will get pregnant for white rhinos gestation period would be 16 months, black rhinos plus minus 15 months. So she will get pregnant while the calf is still around. And then from there, uh, just before she gives birth after the gestation period, just uh, let me say a few days before she gives birth, she will even aggressively push away the baby that is at her side. Uh, by doing that, sometimes she will look for young crushes of rhinos like this that were also pushed out by other rhinos. And then she will aggressively push that young rhino out to socialize with the other ones. And uh, that's how they actually form these young crushes of rhinos like that. But when they get sexually matured, they will start to become solitary. The bulls will become territorial, sometimes even get killed by other bulls that are territorial, that are older than them, uh, more experienced. And, uh, uh, but the females, when they start giving birth, they will uh, become solitary with their calves. You will get even females with their calves socializing, grazing, in terms of grazing, maybe in a, at a nice place like this with good grass, you'll see crush of rhinos of up to even 10. But that does not mean it's a, it's a, it's a permanent uh, grouping. It's just a temporary grouping. After that, they will probably just take their way and, and be solitary. So bulls would, uh, would always be territorial. Territorial bulls would contain a territory of uh, up to even a radius of 10 kilometers, depending on where it is. Sometimes even, uh, depends if it's a black rhino or a white rhino. It's, uh, the thing is, let me say, for example, here in Ongava, we don't have a lot of open space, meaning if you are a white rhino, you, you actually have to obtain a, a space where there's a lot of uh, open plains like this. With also good grass, you get, you get different species of grass. You get the, like an order of, of climax grass. Climax grass is different species of climax grass that have a lot of uh, production of, of, of leaves. These uh, would attract bulk grazers like uh, the white rhinos. Because in the rain, especially in the raining season, they would go for the species of, of, of climax grass with, uh, with a lot of leaf production. So the pioneer species are, are grasses that have a lot of seeds, which actually attracts birds and so on. But as I said, it's like a big buffet. So uh, in the raining season, they would probably go for, for the uh, climax types of species. Uh, it's just like me. I, I don't like fish, but if fish is the only thing on the buffet, I would go. I would go for it. So uh, if they are done with the climax types of species, they would go for the pioneer species. So if you, are, if you are a wide rhino bull and you obtain a territory, you have to obtain a territory with, with uh, good space, uh, good open plains with good grass. This is because it will attract all the females because females are not uh, territorial. They would move around anywhere they want in search for food. So if you have a house with good food, uh, all the ladies will come to you. If you are a black rhino, you have to obtain a, a territory with with uh, good leaves, branches, the type of food that black rhinos love to eat. This would just attract all the, all the black rhinos uh, females to your house. So as you can see, if you look very well on the, on the ears, those are notches, those um, just for identification. We have an anti-poaching unit that uh, patrols every day and night here. Uh, some of them walk around. You never know where those guys are. So if they see rhinos like that, they take pictures of them, especially of the notches, just to go back home and see uh, whether all the rhinos are still safe in the reserve. You can see how they actually lying down also. That's in terms of safety also. Uh, as I told you earlier this morning, uh, prey animals don't like to face the same direction even if they're busy. So when they're lying down, also when they're resting, they like to, to sleep facing the opposite sides just for safety reasons.
can see the ears moving independently. So these guys actually depend on, on the, the smelling and uh, the hearing, especially the hearing. So if you are very, very quiet and you approach them, they will probably just start seeing you within a radius of up to 15 to 20 meters only. That is if you really get uh, to be very quiet and <laughs> so if you look at these guys from a distance, you will probably just think it's a, a dolomite rock or something. So even uh, uh, if even if by fighting they they lose the tip of the horn or something, uh, they the horns regrow, just like our fingernails. So with rhinos, even because even if you look at the ribs. You can see the ribs on the side. It does not mean this guy is uh, sick or uh, something is wrong with them. Even the fattest rhino have uh, those ribs on the side. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, as you can see, these guys are starting to lie down now to have a rest, probably for the night. Don't want. Uh, us to disturb them anymore, meaning uh, we are going to close up for the afternoon drive and I uh, hope to see you again. Hope you guys enjoy it.